Acute kidney injury, or AKI, is where your kidneys suddenly stop working properly. It can range from minor loss of kidney function to complete kidney failure. In this video, we're going to cover all of the following topics, which are timestamped and split into chapters. So firstly, what is acute kidney injury or AKI? Well, AKI is a term used to describe when your kidneys are suddenly not able to filter waste products from the blood. For most people, AKI develops within 48 hours, but sometimes it can take as long as seven days to develop. Now, it's important to note that AKI is different from chronic kidney disease, which is where the kidneys gradually lose function over a longer period of time. In terms of signs and symptoms of AKI, well, these can vary from person to person, depending on many factors like the cause, the severity, as well as your other health conditions. Now, if symptoms do happen, they might include one or more of the following things. So firstly, making less urine than is usual, or if it's very severe, no urine. You might also notice swelling in the legs, the ankles or the feet, fatigue or tiredness, shortness of breath, confusion or mood changes, high blood pressure, decreased appetite, feeling or even being sick, as well as flank pain, meaning pain on the side of your back between your ribs and hips. You may also notice chest pain or pressure, or in severe cases, seizures or coma. Now, in some cases, AKI causes no symptoms, and it's only found through other tests that are done by your healthcare professional. So, in terms of causes of AKI, you're more likely to get it if you're aged 65 or over, you've already had a kidney problem, such as chronic kidney disease, you've got a long-term disease, such as heart failure, liver disease, or diabetes, you're dehydrated or unable to maintain your fluid intake independently, you've got a blockage in your urinary tract, or if you've got a severe infection or sepsis. You might also develop an AKI or be more likely to develop one if you're taking certain medications, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, or even blood pressure medications like ACE inhibitors or diuretics, which you might know as water tablets. There's also a class of medication called aminoglycosides. These are a type of antibiotic that usually only gets given in hospitals. Now, these medicines are only likely to increase the risk of AKI if you're dehydrated or ill. So why is all of this important? Well, in terms of complications, AKI can cause a buildup of waste products in your blood and make it hard to keep the right balance of fluid and minerals in your body. It can also cause permanent damage to your kidneys, leading to the chronic kidney disease or long-term kidney disease that I mentioned earlier. Without treatment, AKI can also affect other organs in the body, like the brain, the heart, and the lungs. So it's important to know what to watch out for, as well as how to lower your risk. Now, in terms of diagnosis, well, if your healthcare professional suspects AKI, they're going to perform an assessment to identify its potential cause. Now, this may involve performing a physical examination, reviewing your medical conditions and medication use history in the past week, including things like over-the-counter products and herbal supplements, as well as asking about recent events and experiences, so things like symptoms, your water intake, recreational drug use, and relevant travel. They'll also want to order blood and urine tests. So this brings us on nicely to some of the tests that might be performed. So some of the most common tests to check for AKI include things like blood tests, so specifically a serum creatinine. Now this helps check how well your kidneys are filtering this waste product from your blood. Another important blood test is called an estimated glomerular filtration rate or EGFR. Now this is calculated based on your blood creatinine level, your age and your sex to estimate your kidney function. Blood urea nitrogen, similar to creatinine, is a test that can be used to measure another waste product in your blood to see how well your kidneys are filtering the blood. Other blood tests like sodium, potassium and bicarbonate can help see if anything is out of balance. Your healthcare professional may also want to track how much urine you pass each day, especially if you're having AKI in a hospital setting. A urine test may also be used to find out more clues about the specific underlying cause of the AKI. Imaging tests like an ultrasound might be helpful in some cases, and in some less common situations, your healthcare provider might need to look at a tiny piece of your kidney under a microscope to get a better idea about the cause, and this is called a kidney biopsy. 
Now, in terms of treatment for AKI, well, it's going to depend on what caused it in the first place. And this is why finding the underlying cause is so important. Now, treatment options can vary, but they can include stopping any medications that might be causing or contributing to the AKI, giving you fluids either by mouth or through your veins, antibiotics if the AKI has been caused by an underlying bacterial infection, or even placing a urine catheter, which is a thin tube used to drain your bladder if the AKI has been caused by a blockage in the urinary system. In severe cases, you might need something called dialysis, which is where you get external support to help filter the blood. Now, in most cases, dialysis treatments are only temporary until the kidneys can recover. Now, most people with an AKI will need to spend some time in the hospital to be monitored whilst receiving this treatment. Now, it's important to know that after having an AKI, you are at a higher risk for other health problems like chronic kidney disease, heart disease, or stroke. You're also at a higher risk of getting AKI again in the future. So it's important to have regular follow-up visits with your healthcare professionals and check your kidney health, starting with two simple tests, ideally within three months of finishing your treatment for AKI. Finally, please check out the description box for more useful resources and some questions that you might want to ask your healthcare provider about AKI.